Welcome to Gaming for Immersion and another mod showcase. Today I've got another exciting overhaul that I encourage all of you to check out. But first, I have an admission. Sometimes you can objectively see that something's quite good while also realizing that it's not for you. And this is a little bit of what happens to me with this particular overhaul which is Duke's Damned Nations. This is an extremely well done and even more importantly, well thought out mod that overhauls a lot of the vanilla Warhammer 3 experience, affecting both battles and campaign in really significant ways. At the campaign level, most of the changes involve slowing down that steamrolling effect that happens in vanilla that often makes it feel like the challenging part of the game is over after just a few dozen turns, and this is something I wholeheartedly approve of. Many of the changes are done with a sense of realism, which is nice. Faction mechanics and difficulty settings are reworked, economics are rebalanced, Replenishment is reduced and becomes much more significant as a factor when working out your strategy. Units are no longer just good or bad, but instead have specific roles that they are really good at, but to the detriment of their ability to fulfill other roles. And I'll get into more specifics about that in just a minute. There are more meaningful choices when it comes to developing your empire, which buildings to construct, in which settlements, and even what level to build them up to because the trade-offs of buildings are way more substantial than they are in vanilla. And all these trade-offs and difficult choices are good for the game, adding a level of depth that is sorely lacking in vanilla. Overall, there are a lot of things to really like about this overhaul, and I know it will appeal to many of you, particularly the more veteran players looking for a fresh and challenging experience. So let's dive in and talk about all the features. I'll try to cover them as succinctly as possible since there are so many, and then I'll give a little bit of my own personal thoughts about each. Please keep in mind that the changes are objective, and then my personal thoughts are subjective. There are some things that I wish the mod did differently, and I'll point those out, but I don't wish to discourage anyone from trying out this excellent overhaul for themselves. One other big change is here under Norska, you will see that there is an entirely new playable faction, that being the Skeggy, and uh, the, uh, the, obviously the uh, faction effects and lord effects are right here for your perusal. I'm not going to read through all of those. I don't really play the Norskin faction very much, but uh, I think that I will probably give these guys a try at some point just to see how they play out. And then another really interesting thing here to take a look at with the difficulty settings on the campaign, you no longer have the vanilla labels here, but you have rather these narrative balanced uphill punishing and hardcore. I just have mine defaulting to hardcore. That's what I played at as I was testing this mod out. Um, it didn't feel unfair to me, but it, again, just like Legendary Difficulty is the uh, the most difficult to play at, at play with at the campaign level. This narrative here is uh, supposed to be for more faster paced. Doesn't really appeal to me, um, but for those of you who like that play style, go ahead and give that a try. And then you got the same thing here for the the battle difficulty as well. And again, I just go ahead. I don't find Warhammer 3 to be all that challenging of a game, even on the highest difficulty setting. So I just default to leaving those at, uh, at those settings right there. So here we are in a Hellman Gorst campaign. And the first thing, the first really obvious thing to notice is look at how gorgeous our banner looks. I don't know if he has changed all of them. I mean, these look the same, but those are also minor factions. Maybe that one might be a little bit different, but I, I don't think so. I think that's the basic one. But yeah, I'm, I'm already looking forward to uh, checking out some of the other factions just to see how their banners look different. But anyway, that's not really the first thing that you ought to notice. The first thing that you ought to notice on starting a new game is this right here. It is turn number one, and your legendary lord, in most cases, is going to start out at level 12. And not only are they at level 12, but they have, uh, I believe he says, 
two skill points per level for, I want to say, the first 15 levels, I think, for legendary lords or maybe for all lords. And uh, maybe for the first 10 levels or something like that for heroes. But anyway, um, definitely going to end up with an awful lot more skill points, especially here at the very beginning. And I have mixed feelings about this. I understand the, uh, the desire to do it. It certainly is going to help your major factions right out of the chute with, um, with feeling more powerful. And you can basically kind of play into the different strengths of the different factions right away as a result of it. Like, for example, I'm definitely going to be bumping up zombie uh, buffs with, uh, with Helm and Gorst here, which will make my armies a lot stronger from the very beginning. However, having said that, part of me also, in fact, I think probably on the whole, I tend to lean in the other direction, which is I like having each level and each skill up that you can apply to your characters to feel really more meaningful. And uh, the way to do that generally is to slow things down. So this is going to be very subjective, obviously, as often is the case in these overhaul mods. Um, this, I think, will be fun for a change of pace. But I think overall, I would probably prefer it if actually the uh, the, the growing of power of your lords was and, and uh, heroes was slower as opposed to uh, radically faster like this is. But anyway, that's just uh, the very first thing to notice. And here we are at the beginning of a Zarina Katarine playthrough. It is turn one. And I'll give you a second to guess what the biggest difference is. And if you're guessing that it's the banner here that looks a little bit different, then no, that's not the right answer. If it's that the army composition is a little bit uh, different, that's not the right answer either. No, the big difference is this right here. You've got Kislev, you've got Zavastra, you've got Prague, you've got Volksgrad, you've got Novchozy, and you've got Plesk. So you actually are starting out in Kislev with six settlements. That's in addition, of course, to the fact that you uh, are starting out at level 12 and um, with the uh, two skill points per level for the uh, early levels, you're starting out with the 22 skill points here. So yeah, you're basically getting an advanced start with, uh, with this particular mod with uh, at least some of the factions. And so I want to talk for a minute about some of the implications for having such an advanced start. And I think this is really going to vary a lot from one faction to another. Probably there's going to be a lot of faction that's a lot of factions that don't have any serious implications of it, but there's going to be some that do. And just coincidentally, the first faction that I tried out here, Kislev, uh, specifically Zarina Katarine, um, is one of them that has a, a pretty significant uh, implication. And so what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is this right here. The, well, let me, let me look at it over here first. Building support. So we're on 10-8. We haven't exactly done anything particularly um, aggressive here. I mean, we took, we started with obviously the six settlements. We took a Vivet, uh, Vitevo. We took Forchikova. I haven't even bothered to come up here and take Igorov yet. And yet, here we are, turn eight. I just activated the, um, the invocation for the very first time because you don't start with enough devotion to actually activate it on turn one. But anyway, having said all that, yeah, look at this, this right here, the supporter race. It's just way, way too easy with uh, all of the additional settlements that you start out with um, as, uh, as the Tsarina to just go ahead and build a couple of these uh, churches here in, in your different provinces. You're going to want to probably do that anyway, because um, religion is so important in Kislev. And I didn't really even think through, other than, other than knowing that playing in vanilla, I like to build these churches right away. I just went ahead and did that in this mod without really thinking it through all that much. And yeah, what, what we see here is that we just shot so far ahead in terms of the supporters that it's not even really a race. So again, it's not 
like a, going to be a deal breaker from those people probably, but it is to me, uh, it's, it's a negative, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a mild negative. I would prefer to have the same. I, I love so many of the different mechanics in this mod, but I just don't really care for the advanced start. And like I said, it has implications like this, for example, that are going to, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of, I, I feel like give me an unfair advantage. So here we are on turn 18. And as you can see, we're already up to 125. We're so far ahead of the orthodoxy that it's not even really a consideration anymore, our participation in the race. So again, this is sort of, you know, up to you whether you think that's a good thing or not. Another thing you'll notice almost right away is the buildings have been completely reworked. Well, I shouldn't say completely. I mean, they, they still serve the same basic functions that they used to. But you can see here that there are both greens and reds associated with many of the buildings. So what you find out is that you actually have trade-offs. So here what you would look at as your income building and it additionally provides some capacity for necromancers this is for the uh, vampire accounts then um, it also has a minus to your control and it's quite a significant one by the time you get up to uh, the third level of uh, of your boneyard here it's a minus nine control taking a look here at the control and growth well this provides both of those things, but at the cost of regular maintenance every turn, 200 in fact at the highest level. And here we have control and vampiric corruption. And again, the same thing, there is a maintenance cost associated with it. This is a little bit less expensive. Um, so it's almost like you, you're gonna have to basically juggle all of these different, uh, I hate to call them resources exactly, but all these different variables for each of your settlements, you can't just count on building every building up to the highest level and, uh, and then forgetting about them. You're gonna have to make sure that things like your public order and your, uh, your maintenance costs are all uh, kept in check. Now, um, the, uh, I'm still, I'm looking at what I call the torch building here. This provides a little bit of additional control and vampiric corruption, um, but again, at a maintenance cost. So I don't know whether I will ever find myself building this in this particular mod. Um, I like the fact that it does a little bit more than it does in vanilla, but I don't know if I'll be using it. Um, then I'm just, I'm not gonna go through all these and obviously it's gonna differ from one faction to the next, but as you can see, many of them have this maintenance cost associated with them or some other type of uh, a negative. So for example, the Necromancer's Tower provides for uh, a control, a minus seven control at, at the highest level. And uh, off the top of my head, it looks like maybe those are at the military recruitment buildings for the most part, don't, don't have any. So yeah, you could potentially get yourself in some trouble with your public order or with the amount of uh, outgoing maintenance costs every turn if you're not careful. One thing that I do want to comment on in this mod is growth. It's not really mentioned from what I saw in the mod description, nor in the document that comes with the mod that tells you about some of the different changes. But uh, I am noticing a pretty significant, uh, let's call it a debuff to growth. And I think maybe what I have found is sort of I don't want to say it's an anomaly exactly, but maybe the most extreme example of it, at least that I've come across so far. So here we are in the Dragon Isles as Gorst. And again, Gorst is an undead faction. I'm not sure that this really makes a lot of sense, but um, the Nurgle corruption, I have taken three out of the four regions here in this province. So basically at this point, all Kugath has left is Dragonfang Mount. And it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to take Dragonfang Mount with this army defending it 
and uh, and Gorst's army is obviously just a bunch of zombies for the most part. So anyway, um, all that being said, I'm looking at my growth here. I've even moved a uh, what you call it a vampire lord here, who's got two skill points added to providing additional growth, and so I've got a boosted growth lord. I've got uh, my uh, vampiric corruption on its way up. Uh, my control is low, but as you can see right here, there's no effect on growth for your public order level. And the interesting thing is we are, despite all of this, still in the negatives for growth in this province, despite having three different regions, three-fourths of this province belongs to us and has these port buildings and we are and we have two lords one of them boosting growth and we are still in the negatives on growth so this province essentially will never grow um at the rate that it's going right now just never um i could move another lord in i could level this one up i guess and boost it that way but here's here's the biggest issue that i'm seeing um, and this again, this is going to be subjective. So some people will like the uh, the the trade offs that buildings provide, and uh, some people may not. And I think this is one of the extreme examples of it because every region in this province has a port building, and every port building. I don't know what the logic is behind it, but every port building is providing negatives to growth instead of positives to growth so seems to me like maybe it's a playability um thing we you know the the mod author wants buildings to have both positives and negatives which makes sense this it just so happens that in this particular case the negative that it's providing is is essentially crippling now the only way to really fit in the uh, the Nurgle corruption here is providing a minus 60. I'm going to have to compare this to vanilla to see whether or not vanilla has a, uh, a similar effect because I haven't actually tried Gorst out with uh, um, with vanilla since the uh, Thrones of Decay changes. So anyway, just uh, wanted to mention here that you're going to see some very, I don't want to call them strange, but some maybe unexpected things happening in the mod such as this. Another thing that I want to call attention to here is your diplomacy. So uh, he does mention that he changes some of the diplomatic relations between the different factions. But the main thing that I want to call attention to is actually this option right here. There is now a become a vassal option that is available to choose from now uh, right here early on in the Gorst campaign I don't have this at available none of them are uh, are willing to become my vassal but that's going to be an interesting thing to keep an eye on to keep track of uh, this dynamic now I will say this unfortunately Warhammer 3 vassals are pretty useless so um, I'll have to get farther into the game to get a sense of whether or not there's ever actually any reason to uh, to vassalize someone obviously it can be useful in terms of providing a minimal amount of resources to you and uh, having them go to war when you go to war things like that but uh, but for the most part vassals are uh, are basically a uh, a small fraction of what they ought to be in this game When it comes to units, the different factions have different, I don't want to necessarily call them new units. I think some of them may be considered new units and some of them are just renamed and uh, altered stats to existing units. But here, for example, with the vampire counts, you can see there here in our raised Deadpool, there is a new unit here called a zombie horde, which has the same stats across the board as regular zombies, but um, it's listed as Undead Tide, and there are 360 models within a single unit, which is twice as many as it normally is for 
the regular old zombies. And one thing that this mod does that is definitely worth noticing is that the health, the hit point pool for different units has been altered. So your um, sort of your uh, chaff uh, melee infantry, your, you know, low tier, but lots of them type melee infantry tend to have really, really high health pools, whereas the smaller numbers um, have much lower. And when we get to like single entities, see, as we get, uh, as we get obviously to smaller numbers of the, uh, the models in each unit, you're seeing fewer or you're seeing less and less health. Um, what would be a good example here? Here's a here's a Vargeist. Um, there's 18 models here. There's still 10,000 health, so they're still pretty good. Um, here's a Black Coach, which is a single entity. He's down to 4,000 compared to, like the uh, the Felbats have you know 50% more than that. But then there's a whole bunch more of them. So anyway, you can see the single entities. Let's take a look here at our Lords, for example. Our Lord. Vampire Lord here. He's a level eight Vampire Lord. He's only got 2,700 health. So yeah, you can see um, basically your Lords are, are quite powerful, but uh, or I should say your single entities are quite powerful, but um, but have a much lower health pool. And now let's take a look at the different units for Kislev. You'll see that there are some differences so far. Well, okay. Um, there we, here we go. So we're starting to see some differences here in some of the starting units, but it'll become, there's great mesas, for example. Um, you can see, basically, it's going to be worth your while to take a look at not just the names of them, because you're not going to be familiar with all their names. Take a look at the, uh, the description. So, for example, gun, great axe, infantry. When we look over here at uh, shields of the czar, versus swords of the czar you can see we have great sword infantry versus just sword infantry um over here we've got uh where is it here so blades of the ice court versus just ice guard so again bow and glaive infantry bow and dual sword infantry so again lots of uh interesting little changes to the units like that for example One thing that the mod author talks about is replenishment rates being much lower. <clears throat> Excuse me. And boy, he was not kidding. So here we are sitting with Zarina Katarine inside a settlement. And you can see here we're still only getting three, three troops replenished per turn in each of these different uh, two down here for, uh, for the Griffin Legion. And, uh, and three for all the infantry. Zarina Katarine herself is only getting 194 hit points. And this is n not suffering from any negative effects. And not only that, but this turn, we researched convalescence, which gives us a plus 2% to casualty replenishment replenishment rate excuse me so actually this was a single troop being replenished per turn until i researched that technology right there so yes definitely very much slowed down replenishment rates now i like that because number one it does definitely uh force you to think through your strategy at a different let's say a, a, you know ha have a much more involved strategy when you know that you're not just going to be instantly replenishing all the troops that you lose from one battle to the next. The other thing that it does that I quite like is it makes choices which give you additional casualty replenishment, like doing this particular research, it makes them much more meaningful. A lot of the magic items and uh, traits for your different characters, as well as the skills, have all been reworked. So you can see here, for example, a Talisman of Preservation that we just picked up has a ward save of 4%, which is obviously less than it is in vanilla. Let's take a look here at some of our traits. Um, for the uh, for the different character units. So discipline, that one looks the same. But um, tough, as you can see, is reduced from vanilla. When you look at your skills now, for example, 
you'll see that three points, well, hard to hit, for example, is, I, w I don't want to say exactly halved, I don't remember exactly what it is in vanilla, but uh, one rank of it's only a single point of melee defense, and then the second rank is uh, two points, and then the third is only four points. So you're going to see kind of consistently across the board here that your skills have less of an impact than they do in vanilla. Um, yeah, so kind of kind of across the board here, at least for uh, uh, many of the ones that I have taken so far. And you combine that then with some of the changes to some of, but not all of the, uh, looking for another good example here, and I, I'm off the top of my head not seeing another great example. But so some of the magic items have been reworked. Um, I'm not sure about the ancillaries yet, but uh, you'll definitely see Overall, I think many of your buffs have been reduced in terms of your traits and in terms of the uh, bonuses that magic items are providing. One of the things that this mod does very well is the loading screens, believe it or not. They actually have really useful information here on the loading screens. I highly recommend paying attention to all of these, reading as many of them as you can, at least until you become more familiar with the mod overall. The changes to battles are quite extensive, but thankfully the mod author has provided us with a document here that goes into full detail on all of the different changes. And I have to say, I really like most of the changes that he's making, maybe even all of the changes that he's made here. It definitely has a dramatic effect on the way battles play out though. And I don't want to misrepresent anything, so I think maybe the easiest way to do this is to actually refer to this document itself. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing out. However, I would encourage you to read it for yourself if you're interested in trying this mod. But as you can see, basically, um, he's reworked fatigue, morale and leadership, armor, ranged combat, and collision damage. And then, as I've already mentioned, the uh, units have been changed fairly extensively as well. So take a look at all of these things that are in the document. Now, a couple that I just want to call attention to are, first of all, the fatigue. The fatigue in vanilla is really not done particularly well. Like, for example, I don't understand why fatigue reduces armor in vanilla. Um, kind of seems like the cheap way out, and this, uh, this mod does address that. Well, fatigue, your troops recover from your tiredness faster than in vanilla, which is good. Walking actually reduces fatigue rather than simply not raising it. This gives faster fatigue to units, but not in a way that you need to walk across maps at triple speed, being bored. Um, so again, I like the, the fact that there's heavy penalties here. So you do have, I think, this additional tactical consideration of, of taking fatigue into consideration. So you're no longer charging across the battlefield because you're just not worried about any of the effects of fatigue. I personally like that. Uh, morale and leadership, again, he's, he's reworked some of those. One of the things that, uh, that I like is the fact that this is intended to allow line holding units morale to hold up better while shock troops can break morale much better. To me, that's your hammer and anvil, anvil tactics, for example, that I really like to use and I'd like to see the, uh, the increased effect of those. Armor is actually now more impactful than it is in vanilla. He's made lots and lots of changes. I think what you would call uh, more realistic in, uh, changes to missile units. But anyway, try it out for yourself. It is definitely going to play out a lot differently than it does in vanilla. Some other changes to battles that I quite like. Um, the undead are no longer affected by fatigue the same way that other units are, which I think makes sense. The demons um, don't exactly circumvent fatigue. They have just a slightly different mechanic here. When their leadership is over 50%, they don't tire, but they lose combat efficiency when their bindings start to fail. The uh, one thing about magic is these miscasts 
make a real impact on the battlefield now when you cast a a uh, excuse me when you have a miscast they actually do a lot more negative um, to you than they do in vanilla um, damage spells are generally less powerful but still pack a punch and take longer to wind up giving time to react so that's a slight change as well and uh, it's basically intended to i think decrease the overpowered nature of direct damaging spells and make the uh, buff and debuff spells much more um, significant and then this is a really significant one we talked about this already when we talked about the health of your lords and heroes and your your smaller model units versus your larger model units overall but uh, obviously they're now going to be much much less tanky however they do do uh, really good damage so something to keep in mind that you're going to have really effective lords and heroes but they're also more fragile so you can't just completely tank entire battles with them and then finally sieges are this is obviously near and dear to my heart for those of you who have been following the channel for a while i like the fact that sieges as he describes here are now a very bloody affair troops inside get significant morale benefits have nowhere to run, uh, towers and barricades are rebalanced as well. So anyway, a lot to uh, like in terms of the battle changes. I, I quite frankly really, I think I probably would agree with just about every single change that has been made here. Although I will say when it comes to Lord and Heroes, there are times where I like having sort of the uber powerful uh, characters. So again, this is going to kind of be a change of pace type of a mod for me as opposed to one that I use all of the time. All right, so overall, as I mentioned, I really, really like most of the changes that this mod does. Certainly almost everything when it comes to the battles I quite like. And then when it comes to the campaign as well, there are definitely some things that appeal to me. The basically attempt to slow down the pacing of the campaign to make it much less of a steamrolling effect that we get so frequently in vanilla really, really appeals to me. I love the reduced replenishment. I love more of the uh, impactful choices that you have in terms of... Um, basically like picking your your casualty replenishment buffs for example you uh, you will find the those decisions are going to have an additional level of let's say strategic um, implications when you make them so i do like all of that i like the changes to magic i like the changes to the units now there's still going to be a lot of getting used to some of the different units but i like the fact that units are much more specialized and have particular roles as opposed to they're just being really good units and, and and really bad units having said all that i do question why the decision was made to make the advanced start as overpowered as it seems to be and in particular I have to say I prefer to not only not start with the larger empires but also have the um, have the starting legendary lords already at level 12 in addition to having the two skill points per level for those early levels because the result is that you just don't get, or at least I don't get, that same sense of um, satisfaction from each level. Each time I level a character, I kind of like the the visceral reaction of okay, I can feel this this increase in power, and uh, unfortunately, that uh, meaningfulness has been removed, or at least that's how it feels to me. Now, again, this is incredibly subjective. I think there's a lot of people who will like having the advanced start. I know that the mods that give you multiple um, skill, up, uh, skill ups for every level that you increase, it, they're quite popular. So obviously there is definitely a, an appeal out there for a lot of people. So again, don't, don't take my opinion as your own. You can certainly make up your own mind. But for me, that is probably the number one consideration for me um, 
in terms of a negative. So, and I, I guess what I would say about that is I don't really understand why there is this combination, this sort of strategic vision for the mod to slow things down and then go ahead and speed things up again at the beginning. So it could very well just be that I'm missing something major. And it's going to have different implications for different factions. I'm, for Kislev, I mentioned the, um, the supporter race is kind of removed as a, a strategic challenge, which is something that I don't care for. But it could very well be that I just picked a faction that has uh, one of the... Uh, one of the biggest implications, and, and maybe most of the others would be perfectly fine. So, in any case, there's uh, definitely a lot to like about this mod. Um, I definitely will be trying it out from time to time, probably when I want to see like a particular faction from a fresh perspective. Um, but like I said, some of the trade-offs for me are going to be something that's going to prevent this from being sort of like a, uh, a permanent part of my load order. Anyway, again, um, I would encourage everybody to check it out. For those of you who already have, let me know your comments. Let me know if I'm completely full of it. I might very well be. Um, I know that not everybody likes to play the game the same way that I do. And uh, all right, anyway, I think I will leave it there for this particular mod. If there's any other overhauls or any other types of mods um, that you would like me to try to showcase, please uh, let me know that in the comments as well. And in any case, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.